Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode. In an effort to appeal to a wider, more general audience, I'm going to be toning down the swearing and kind of just trying to make it a little more of a wholesome family channel, starting with this video. Well, it's summer, so it's that wonderful time of year where a bunch of friends and I get together to go somewhere and drink a lot of water and study literature like postmodernism. This year we're reading the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Just kidding, we got fucked up. So it's been tradition for a couple of years now to meet up with a bunch of friends and go somewhere epic and just be degenerates. Last year we rented a houseboat on Shasta Lake. You might have even seen the video or pictures. This year we rented a mansion out in Palm Springs for a long weekend of memory loss. I wanted to change up the format and kind of just try something newish, so I brought with me the Nashika N8000, which is famous for producing four half frame photos that you can combine to make a 3D kind of like flipbook image. It's also famous for being a plastic pain in my ass. Yeah, so it's not real 3D. Sorry, James Cameron, if you're watching. In other news, the Easter Bunny is also not real. Anyway, with that being said, I packed up my Speedo and headed to Palm Springs. The house we stayed at had like eight rooms and a guest house, all of which were bigger than my apartment in Los Angeles. So after I had a good cry about that, uh, Monica and I took the guest house. More on that later. The house had a lot of amenities like a game room, a bar, and a mini golf course. All that was missing was the petting zoo and the gift shop, and of course a film lab. The house also had a pool, which was essential because it was literally hotter than sub-Saharan Africa out there. The Nashika is kind of an unruly and uncontrollable 35 millimeter camera. I wanted to stick to my usual overexposure style of shooting, but the exposure settings on that camera are pretty much non-existent. As you can see, we have three settings. We have sun, sun cloud, and cloud indoor. And there's no way to know what they mean. They might as well be hieroglyphics. And the shutter is locked at 1 60th of a second, so good luck there. Anyway, we did not hesitate to get the party started and essentially dehydrate ourselves in 115 degree weather by drinking beer. I loaded up the Nashika with Color Plus 200 and got myself loaded with a whiskey and coke. On day one, we engaged in gladiator style hand-to-hand -hand combat, of which I was fortunate enough to be the foundation. I now know what it's like to be repeatedly slapped with sausage on the back of my head. So this camera uses four separate lenses to produce four half frame photos on 35 millimeter. So you'll get about 18 shots on a 36 shot roll. You may be wondering how you focus with a camera like this. And I'm here to tell you that that shit ain't happening because there is no focusing with this camera. Additionally, you'll have to do some work on the back end to make sure all the photos are lined up and matching in an animation editor. If you do decide to shoot this camera, just know it's like four times the amount of work that it would be just to shoot a regular 35 millimeter camera. That is assuming your shots even turn out in the first place. But you can't deny how cool it looks when time is frozen like that. It reminds me of my favorite movie, Clock Stoppers. Man, that movie was playing a dangerous game with its title. You remove one letter and it's a whole different film.
you can get a flash for this camera as well. Again, it's nothing special and you don't have any control over it, but it certainly helps. If it isn't already obvious, um, I would not recommend shooting slide film on this camera. I feel like a lot of my shots were saved purely by the dynamic range of color negative film. Day two was pretty similar. We drank, we partied, you get the idea. Lots of pictures were taken, mostly on cell phones because these a-holes haven't seen the light yet. The light of film photography. So what happened here? It looks kind of like a double exposure, which wouldn't really surprise me because the plastic piece of shit film winder on the Nashika was giving me trouble all weekend. Have I mentioned yet that this camera is made of low grade plastic? Anyway, I threw a roll of expired Kodak PX125 into the Nashika to see what would happen. And these actually turned out to be some of my favorites. Day three was our last day, and to celebrate, I was dressed to the nines. At this point, I was shooting Portrait 400 as well. I was also trying to match my buddy drink for drinks, so not a lot of the shots turned out. Because of multitasking and no other reason. So when it was time to go home, we all had a collective group cry and then parted ways. There was a lot of crying on this trip for one reason or another. Me personally, it was because I was using a camera that exists purely to me over and waste film. That being said, my favorite shot from this trip is this one. That's my buddy Lucas there and my brother Matt, and I honestly wish I got to shoot them more often because they're pretty hilarious when they're around each other. Also the refraction on the water in the foreground just looks straight up delicious. I'm really glad this shot turned out. So what made this trip really interesting for us is apparently where we were staying in the guest house, there was a small scorpion infestation. And yeah, not the chill kind of scorpions, the translucent small ones that are the deadliest in Northern America. Anyway, one of these pointy boys hitched a free Uber ride in one of our bags and uh, got to roam around our apartment for a little bit before inevitably stinging Monica in the foot. It was pretty crazy. We had a little evening chat with poison control as Monica's leg went completely numb in under a minute, later to be replaced with a strong burning sensation that nine out of 10 doctors do not recommend. Luckily, she's fine now. It took about a week, but she's back in fighting condition. Still waiting to see if any superpowers arise, though. We got this really cool photo of it under a UV light, which makes it look like one of those little shits from the Alien movies. I guess the moral of the story is, if you go to the desert, make sure to get a cool-ass photo of a scorpion. So yeah, it was a fun and relaxing weekend, from what I remember. In the end, I don't really know what to say about the Nashika. It's kind of a finicky camera, and generally the results don't warrant the amount of work put in. I mean, it took me about a little over a day to edit together 16 flipbooks, or whatever you want to call them. And I had almost no control over the exposure, so that really wasn't a game I was trying to play. I got this camera about a year ago uh, for $25 before it spiked in price. Personally, unless you enjoy pain, 
I wouldn't pay anything above that for this camera nowadays. Would I shoot with the Nashika again? Yeah, eventually. It's kind of a photography trick camera, I guess. I really like the results in the end, but man, it's a pain in the ass to get there. I guess it's kind of like the Oregon Trail. In the end, you'll be rewarded with settling the West, but you may die of dysentery getting there.